Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and today I am back with challenge number five in my Shop Your Stash September challenge series. I hope you'll stick around, see what the new challenge is, see what I'm going to create, and find out how you can play along. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I hope you've been enjoying my Shop Your Stash September challenge series as much as I have. It's been fun to stop by with the little challenges and I love to see your creations rolling in. If you haven't heard about my special series this month, I am trying not to spend any money on new craft supplies and using what I have. And I'm doing that by giving myself little challenges and I would love for you to play along. Now I do have an intro video with more details linked in that description box below. And later in this video, I'll tell you a little bit more about how to enter. For the new challenge, challenge number five, I would like you to challenge yourself. I want you to go out there on the internet, find a crafty challenge blog or page or Instagram account and create something for that challenge. It can be a current challenge or past one. Just keep in mind that when you fill out the form with your project, I will ask you the name of the challenge and the number if applicable. Now, if you don't wanna type that out, you can always just copy and paste the link to the challenge. I know it may seem kind of weird that I'm challenging you to go out and find a challenge, but I thought this way, if you have a favorite site where you get challenges, you could do something more your style. And hey, maybe I'll find a new favorite too by looking at your creations and your links. For my card today, I'm going with AAA Cards, game number 199. I have been following this blog off and on for a while, but I've never actually played along. And if you know my style and you've been around very long, you know I love clean and simple. So the latest challenge, number 199, is no layers and there's an optional twist of hugs. I'm going to try to meet both of those challenges. Now I will link this challenge in that description box below if you want to use it as well. But again, you're free to use any challenge out there. And you don't even have to make a card. You can make whatever will fit that challenge. In front of me are some of the supplies that will get me started on this card. I got out the Inky Antics Sending Hug set. I thought that was appropriate for the optional twist. And I just love this little girl down here who's hugging that envelope. The black ink is for my sentiment and image. And then I got out my yellow blending brush and some yellow ink from Gina K Designs because I thought that might be a good way to add some color. When I add any other products or tools, I will be sure to let you know. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. Today's card is gonna go rather quick, so you'll wanna make sure you keep your eyes open. To get started, I am going to stamp my image and sentiment at one time. And I use my Misty so I could set those up and then re-ink if needed. Now I did go ahead and cut my card base and score it, but I haven't folded it yet just so it will lay nicely in the Misty. I set up the girl and the sentiment, which reads, sending smiles your way. And then when I put the door over it, I kind of lifted it up there, you'll see, and I tried to make sure everything was straight across and it looked good. So I went ahead and inked it up and stamped it. Now, because I haven't used this stamp very often, I did go ahead and ink it and stamp it twice. And also with such a clean and simple card like this, you do want to make sure everything is nice and crisp. So now I ensured that I had a nice black image and sentiment. Now, before I move on, let me tell you how you can enter your project in this challenge. 
I would love you to join me this month in these challenges and create with what you have. And you can do this in three simple steps, which I will explain now. The first thing that you'll do is create a new project following today's challenge using only items from your stash. Then you're going to upload a photo of that project using the form linked in the description box below. And finally, you can sit back and enjoy the recap video in October. I do ask that you create a separate project for each challenge and please, even if you're super inspired by a single challenge and create more than one project, please just choose your favorite to upload. When you photograph your project, rectangle landscape photos are the best and make sure to send them at a nice quality. And just a heads up that even though my watermark will not be on your photo, I will not have time to add your name or YouTube username. So if you would like to do that, please do that ahead of time. And here in just a second, I'll show you a quick way that you can do that. Once your project photo is ready for uploading, you will need to use the specific form for the challenge. Each challenge will have a new form linked, so make sure when you're uploading that the challenge number or name at the top of the form matches the challenge that you're submitting for. If you do want to add your name to your photo, it doesn't have to be anything fancy or require any special software. Most mobile devices and laptops or computers will allow you to open a photo and add a text box to it. Then you would just save this and upload it to the form. Speaking of the form, an example is up on screen now and you will want to make sure that you fill out each individual section. You will enter your YouTube username, your first name, your email address and the email address is only if I would need to contact you with a question and I will not be retaining these after this month's challenge. You will then let me know how you followed the challenge. In this example, it would be what kit you used. Then I need you to agree to let me use the photo in the October video. And finally, you're going to upload the photo from your computer and submit it. You will want to make sure that you see this screen that says you have submitted it before closing out your window. All photos will be due by midnight central time on October 10th. I am looking forward to seeing what you create this month and hope that you'll join me. As I was getting ready to finalize this video, I realized that I hadn't yet done the QOTV or question of the video. So before we get back to the process, I thought now would be a great time. I would like to know, do you have a favorite challenge site? Whether it's a current one or one that has maybe closed down, let me know your favorites in the comment section below. Don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you answered it and would like me to see it. For myself, my favorite challenge was Casual Fridays with the CAS for Clean and Simple Capitalized, but that is no longer in business. I do sometimes though go back and use the challenges for projects, and my favorite current challenge is of course Craft Roulette with Mary Gunn, which is live every Friday night here on YouTube. I can't wait to hear about some of your favorites. For the next part of my card, I'm going to create my own stenciling mask. I got out a piece of 36 pound vellum and this will allow me to see through it so I can place it correctly on my card front, but then I can also ink blend and have kind of a halo peeking out around my image. I chose a circle from one of my Spellbinder circle nesting sets that would fit around my girl image. I will not be including the sentiment on the masks part of the card. To hold my mask in place while I do the blending, I got some adhesive from my ATG and balled that up with my fingers. This takes away a little bit of the tackiness, so later this will just peel right up off my card front without ruining it. 
Then I got out my blending brush and kind of starting in the center of that vellum circle, I just did little circular motions to spread out that color. I did try to keep my fingers kind of centered in the circle just so I wouldn't get them all inky and then, you know, touch someplace else on the card and then have yellow all over. I did want to focus just right there around the image. When I thought I had good coverage, I removed that vellum mask and you'll see here that it just looks like she's shining and has a little yellow halo. To add just a little more color to the image, I brought in two of my tri-blend markers, the dark red blend and the pale pink blend, and I added a little red to the heart on the envelope, and then I added a little pale pink to the girl's cheeks. Now off camera later you'll see that I brought in a white gel pen and put a little highlight on the heart as well. And here's a look at that finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's super quick and super simple card. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now I hope that you're going to join me for challenge number five. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.